Oh. Yep, so the black Abarth is finally sold and the replacement is already here. This over here is the replacement for Project Abarth. It is another Abarth. And the main difference, at least that what you can see, is that it's white instead of black. But there's a lot of stuff in this car that doesn't meet the eye. And I'm going to tell you all about this brand new Abarth that Tanai just picked up. Welcome back to another episode of Project Abarth. So this is a 2016 uh, Fiat Punto Abarth, just like the last car. Tanai sold it because he was getting an insane deal on this particular car and he sold the last car via TDH Classifieds. Shout out to that. If you're looking to sell or buy any cool tuner car, enthusiast car, do check out our new facility called TDH Classifieds. We have some insane stock on there currently. So yeah, the black Abarth got sold via TDH Classifieds and he bought this thing over here. Now, first of all, Tanay is super happy because originally he wanted a white color Punto Abarth, but unfortunately he couldn't buy one at the time. But when this thing came up and looking at the price, which I'm not going to disclose because it is an insane deal, this thing was a steal basically. And the amount of mods done to this car, I would say, is worth around six to seven lakh rupees. That's how much money the owner has, the previous owner has spent on this car. Let me run you through some of the mods. So the main thing and the biggest visual difference apart from the paint of course from the older Abarth are these amazing team dynamic wheels. Now first of all these wheels will definitely be more lighter than the outgoing wheels that the black car had and first of all we over here at TDH are big fan of team dynamic wheels. I mean they just look epic, they're super light and they might not look really crazy but we just love the motorsport derived look of it. And behind that is even something more important impressive which are K-Sport brakes which are somewhere north of 300 mm discs I don't know the exact thing they're absolutely massive some would say overkill for such a small car but hey it's great performance at the end of the day and underneath the hood I have to say that the setup that the older huh. And underneath the hood, the setup of the older car is very similar to this new white Abarth that we have. Uh, so it is running a Piper Cross air filter. The last car had a k &N air filter and the positioning and everything is pretty much similar to the last car. Uh, apart from that, the exhaust system is a brand new IES system. The car had an aftermarket downpipe and exhaust system and all of that. But it was really not up to par and the car had tons of lag. So as soon as Tanai got the car, he went down to Amir's shop, which is IES performance, fitted a brand new downpipe, a brand new exhaust system so that the performance of the black car is still there in this car and it feels almost identical. And the other thing and the major difference is that the intercooler is different, at least the brand is different. The last car, the black car had a Garrett intercooler. This white car has a Forge Motorsport intercooler. So not going to make that big of a difference, but yeah. I think a cool little addition. Oh, and of course it has a BOV as well as you'll hear while we're driving it. It's pretty substantial. So apart from the wheels and the brakes that I mentioned earlier, this thing also has Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, which are a big, big upgrade over Tanay's shitty old tires that he had. Th those tires had absolutely no grip, whereas these super grippy, this is TDI, super grippy and has tons of grip even in the rain. But the other thing is that, as you can notice, the wheel gap is not that much. And that's because this thing is on KW adjustable suspension. It is slammed to the ground. And the handling that this thing has is insane. I mean, the last car, even a stock Punta Abarth has amazing handling, but this thing is just a different level. And over here at the end, you just have a stock Abarth Punto tip. That's because Tanay sourced one from somewhere. I don't even know where he got it from. Put it just like the last car. So, you know, it has that OEM plus look. And if we lay over a clip of B-roll, it has a little cutout over here because the last car had a Magnaflow end can over there. So, it was pretty big, looked very aftermarket and Tanay got into a lot of trouble with the cops. Yeah, so that is a big, big important thing if you're going to do something like that. 
and step into the interior and it's business as usual. It looks very similar to the older black Abarth that Tanai had but there's one main difference is that the seats don't have that uh, seat cover that Tanai had. It had this black and yellow contrasting seat cover and well that seat cover meant that the bolsters were not as firm and didn't the seat didn't hold you in place when you were going into the corners and especially if you're a passenger you're just being thrown around here and there when you're thrashing it in the corners and this stock OEM seat makes a big difference without the seat covers because the bolsters are thick, they're firm and they hold you into place and since this car is all about the corners, it's very very fun to just thrash it around here and there. And the other thing before we go out for a quick spin is this thing over here. This is a short shifter by Mishimoto, it has a carbon fibre finish, it looks absolutely sick and when you're driving it, it makes one hell of a difference. Stock Punto Abad shifters are kind of crap. This still isn't that great because underneath the linkage is pretty much stock. Uh, but yeah, makes a big difference while shifting. So driving this car is just a very special experience. I mean, the last car was great and all, no doubt. But having the whole package is just different. The suspension, the brakes, the tyres, everything works together and this thing is a little track monster and I have to say track monster because this thing is currently on its softest setting for the KW suspension and it is still ultra stiff. I mean, I can't imagine how stiff it will be if you turn it all the way up. But if you throw it into a corner, it stays flat. That's what I have to say. And the other thing is this Mishimoto uh, short shifter is just perfect it's not perfect but it, it's a big step up from the older car definitely because Fiat's generally they have very long throws the slotting is not really that good the slotting hasn't improved that much by the short shifter but at least you can quickly change gears and reduce your shifting times that makes a big difference Currently, this thing is not running a e-tuner stage 2 map. It is on a stage 2 map, but uh, the last tuner who's tuned this car, well, at least according to us, hasn't done that good of a job. It drinks quite a lot of fuel and there's a lot of lag, especially in the lower RPMs. And well, once the e-tuner stage 2 map goes on, it'll feel just like the last car in terms of power and the way it used to pick up because definitely the last car, at least in a straight line, was at least felt faster. I'm not sure if it was faster or not. But yeah, this thing is a little hoot to drive. We'll just do a quick pull after this U-turn. And the brakes are, I mean, overkill for this car. So aggressive it's absolutely brutal and the brakes are just like throwing an anchor out of the window I mean it's so powerful for a car this small but I'm pretty sure if Tanai or if somehow someday we have the money to take this onto a track like MMRT or Curry this is where this whole setup will shine because this thing is just wild it's overkill for the street I would have to say but I mean for the price that Tanai got it which again I'm not gonna disclose it is an absolute steal to get this car. Now, when it comes to what can we do next, this is basically a complete build. You can't really do anything apart from this. But there are still a little bit, little few mods that maybe you can do. Uh, but again, those are mods that need a lot of commitment. Uh, mainly if you want to take this car all the way up to stage three and push the power upwards of 200 bhp but again it's not really practical for a car this small and that means that you have to again change the whole exhaust system by the turbo which is i guess a lakh rupees lakh lakh and a half so yeah that is another level of commitment or the other thing we can do is improve the handling and the power delivery even more by adding a quaif lsd now this car apparently when it was being sold had one but I think the owner did not install it and well it got sold to someone else so maybe a Quaif LSD is there in the future let's see and the next episode is going to be a little bit more of an interesting one a lot of people were suggesting that we should put project Abarth and project Laura at least on a straight road and see which one's more powerful at least on paper the Laura is has more power basically has the bigger engine but also at the same time it weighs more weighs quite a lot more so that will make a huge difference when it comes to straight line speed 
and this thing has brand new tires the suspension is better than the loras uh, weighs significantly lesser and since this is kind of like project apart now this makes the most sense to put against the lora so hopefully the next video is project lora versus project abarth stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching this episode of project abarth hope you like this brand new car that we just picked up uh, maybe we'll make some more uh, videos on it in the future if you have any suggestions or if you want to see anything particularly out of this car do comment down below i'll see you in the next one